out my readers so I can read the screen and stuff, but it's all dirty. All right, let's turn off notification. Put it on do not disturb. Okay, there we are. <laughs> now I'm live. All right. Are people actually here yet? Yeah, they're watching us now. Yay! <laughs> now I'm mute. Yeah, everybody's on mute right now, so we're gonna wait a <clears throat> wait a little bit. I'm mute you too. Yeah. Mute. Hello, everybody. Kaka. All right, you are gonna go. Kaka. All right, you are gonna go. All right. Well, you can go in your own room, tiny human. Take the dog. No, Willow, no, dog. Hey. All right, please excuse the uh, the tiny human in the background that is upset. So you'll just have to excuse that. I'm sorry. All right, let me get everything set up so I can see the comments. Move that away. Hi, Esther. So excited to be drawing you and your son. Oh my gosh, it's like the most beautiful portrait ever. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna wait a few more minutes to, to greet everybody, get everyone started. Um, and it looks like we have people checking in from all over. We have Brona from Virginia, um, Marcella from Northern Nevada. Um, we have Ether, um, she's ca coming in from south of France. Um, we have Anita from Australia. Um, we have someone from Ireland. Sorry, it's like the screen is far away. And like I put on my magnifiers, my, my readers, and it just makes everything bigger, but it's still blurry. So, yeah. All right, I'm gonna switch these. All right, so I can, hello from Sweden. <laughs> hello, France. And uh, France is from New Jersey with me. Um, she lives a little bit, I think that way is north. Um, Hello from Wisconsin, Oakland, California, Kentucky, uh, Austria, Maine, Northern California, Sweden, Upper Michigan, Trinidad, United Kingdom, oh my goodness, another Virginia, uh, looks like Reunion Island. Wow, we got people checking in. Remember, this is so exciting. Um, happy Thanksgiving or Belated Thanksgiving to um, all my American friends. We have uh, a lot to give thanks for, um, for health and uh, family getting together and being safe, but like, you know, getting together from a distance, like virtually together. Um, so that, that's always interesting with technical difficulties. More from California, Massachusetts, Florida, Canada. Ooh. And also, uh, Sketchy just posted that we have a special offer on the art school classes, buy one, get one free with discounts code BOGO, thanks, T-H-X. Um, so it expires tomorrow. So if you want to um, get yourself uh, into some of the classes, that would be really awesome to do because uh, you can do portraits for friends and family and they would make lovely gifts for the holidays coming out. <clears throat> Especially, you know, uh, since... A lot of families have to, to kind of stay apart for a little bit. Um, but yeah, so let me look at the time. It is about five after. So let's get this party started, a little paint party. Um, geez, this light is glary. I'm just gonna make this a little bit softer. Hopefully I won't knock it over. There, that's slightly better. Now I don't have like this giant light bulb in my eyes. <laughs> All right, so um, on 
no, this way. Um, you can see the beautiful um, Esther and her son George. Sorry, I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, I always slur my speech. And I was really attracted to doing this portrait because, like, my gosh, it, it, just the, the colors, the warmth, everything about it was just really, really exciting and just so beautiful. I'm trying to get... I don't want half screen. I just want sc screen and screen. Come on, we can do this. Ugh. Don't split screen. There we go. Okay, now I have all of my glitches worked out. Um, because this is a, a more intense portrait and I want to attempt to finish as much as um, I can within this hour, um, I already did a little bit of pre-sketching. Um, I can show you how I did that um, really quick. Just to get the, the measurements down, I put a layer of carbon on the back and I just marked off where the main features are so that it'll just be a little bit quicker. This saves me about a half an hour of sketching time. You can also do the same thing with a piece of um, carbon paper and um, you can stick it like on a page behind your sketchbook and then stick your watercolor paper underneath and just transfer the basics of your drawing. Um, I never transfer an entire sketch. I always leave something to do on the watercolor paper. But just because you're not supposed to be doing a lot of eraser work on watercolor paper because it can damage the, um, the sizing on the paper, I always find it good to practice, practice, practice ahead of time. Um, it's just to get all the familiarity that familiarity that you need with the bone structure and the features in your sketchbook first um, and then transfer your sketch or you know, just be very, very mindful that you, you cannot do a lot of erasing on watercolor paper. And if you do, you need to use a kneaded eraser. Um, let me move my little keyboard out of the way and let's get started. All right, um, I'm sitting at a new desk um, <laughs> with a new chair. So it's, it's a wobbly chair. And uh, if I just randomly fall over, like, don't worry, I'm fine. It's just, I can't sit like a well-behaved human being. I just, I'm like a little kid when it comes to that. Like I'm all over the place. Oh, I'm completely all over the place. Um, and as I always say, if you need to, if the colors get distracting when you are doing your drawing and your sketches and your painting, you can always um, use your tablet um, or your computer, whatever it is that you're using for your reference. Um, and you can turn off the color just by going to edit, um, then going to the filters, and then choosing one of the black and white options. And sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to um, not get as confused with the changes in color and you can see more of a tonal thing so it's more value um, sometimes i do that to help me because sometimes color is distracting sometimes i want to switch up the color palette from what the photographer originally had so it's just it's just another tool that you can use to help you i mean we have the technology why not help yourself um, this card changes all right so i'm going to uh, continue working on this sketch and we can do some chitty chat while we get this started. So, oh my gosh, France did such a beautiful, beautiful portrait prior to this class. If you did not watch that, I recommend that you bookmark it for later. I know that YouTube allows you to save videos. Zoom in. It's like amazing. This photo like when you zoom in all the way you can actually see the reflection of the photographer in, in Esther's eye that's like amazing oh my gosh look at these freckles like mmm woman you have the most beautiful skin it's such like a golden color both you and your son I recommend that everybody check out um, Esther Lai's profile on Sketchy like it was really difficult to choose a single photo that I liked best because it's just absolutely gorgeous. Oh, what is on my hand? Um, 
I wear, these are copper infused um, compression gloves. Um, they're supposed to help with joint pain. Um, I typically wear them when I paint and draw for two reasons. Um, first off, my hands get really achy because uh, if I eat too much salt, my, my joints swell. And number two, I have, um, I have carpal tunnel and so the compression helps that feel better. Um, and also it prevents me from rubbing the oils of my skin onto the paper because oil and water don't mix. So it helps preserve the paper. Um, are you using a colored pencil to draw right now? Yes, I am. Um, one of the reasons why I do colored pencil drawings when I do in demonstration is uh, it shows up better on the camera. Um, if I were to use my typical 4H pencil, I would have to tweak the lighting and all the settings for the filming. And then once I started painting, I would have to readjust them because then everything would be too bright. And I don't feel like dealing with that. Um, so my apologies. Like I, also, sometimes it's really nice just to use a colored pencil because um, it adds just like a, a, a beautiful little chaotic element, especially since I'm using my multicolored pencil. Hi, Kelly. Um, so I, I tend to just, um, I'll either use this one or I have like a, a blue pencil somewhere that like I've literally worked down to like a nub that I really enjoy using. So she has like a beautiful strip. Like honestly, I can just stare at her bone structure for like days. And she has those really deep, deep brown eyes where you're like, wait, where, where does your pupil begin and your iris end? <laughs> so I'm using a magic rainbow pencil um, that is from Cole Anor. It's a European pencil company. And they're very active on their Instagram account. So anytime you do like a shout out to them, like usually one of their representatives get back to you and will check out your artwork, which is really rather nice to, to get that feedback. So. Oh, you had to feed your kittens. All right, so, um, just trying to work in the structure of our face. I'm keeping in mind um, that I do a lot of work with shapes, uh, less line work, and I won't really do any shading like you would see in some of our other instructors' videos. Um, and that is because I'm painting, I'm not drawing. So all of my shading is going to be taking place with the paint and not my pencil. Right now I just pulled out a printout because I cropped it to a square and I'm getting myself all messed up with the proportions of where I cut things off and I really utilize a lot of negative space when I paint in order to tell where on earth things are. So I just realized I didn't make her bottom lip plushy enough, so I have to fix that. And I don't want to over fix it because this is supposed to be a painting, not a drawing. But I guess you're sort of getting both since I'm using a colored pencil underneath. Oh, you're going to have to uh, watch the first 15 minutes to see what you missed. Yeah, that's the wonderful thing about catching these YouTube cast like um versus having like a live instruction right in front of you if you show up late to a class you can't be like wait can you rewind what you just did you can't really do that but because since we have the power of the internet and uh youtube hosting as far as if you miss something you can just pause rewind go use the restroom if you need it grab yourself a snack come back it's nice. 
Oh my gosh. It's a beautiful baby. Look at him. Look at him. Like, it's, it's so amazing how, like, a certain George have, like, the same nose, like, the same eyes, the same bottom lip. His, his top lip is slightly different. But it's just so fun to look at um, parents and their children together. And see what's going on as far as like who looks like who. It's just really fun. So it's good in the comments. A lot of people saying hello, need a watercolor, and you want to learn all the steps. Um, so Rat Mammy, I, I recommend that you check out my watercolor course um, because included in it is my crash course in watercolor as a little bonus, um, which is my previous course. And that's where I go over some of the basic steps. Um, and then the latest class that I'm offering has like, you know, the deeper dive into um, some of the other aspects of watercolor, like color theory and um, I go less into how to apply the paint and more how to use the techniques um, for more expressive. And this is getting a little dull. Let me grab a sharper one. I feel like I messed up the nose there. Like, that should. Like, I can't really figure out the geometry of this little kid's nose. It's, it confounds me. Just a little bit. Excuse me. A little bit of eyebrow there. A little bit of glowing in between. So the eyebrow goes all the way out to there. Um, all right, so Rat Mammy, um, just, you can just check out um, my watercolor class if you purchase it. Um, if you go all the way to the bottom of the courses, the videos, you'll see um, that the, the bonus crash course in watercolor is available. And so I would recommend doing that first and those basic lessons and then starting at the beginning of the new course, the portraits in watercolor. So that can get you where you wanna be. And you just gotta practice um, and practice and practice and practice, but you I mean you have to practice the right things. So. I recommend doing like lots of exercises and but don't practice to the point where you just don't have any fun with the actual watercolor because we don't need that um and just be really gentle and understanding with yourself as you go because watercolor is a little bit backwards if you're used to working with oils and acrylics um I think I'm ready to start getting some paint. So let me get out some of my favorite brushes. Brushes that I love. Gonna get out some of my favorite brushes. I can't help myself up soon. That is what I do. I sing while I paint. I think I forgot to put my pants right back inside my palette. Aha! Found you. No, you don't want to. Alright, um... I feel like starting with the background today. You know, art is not about drawing, it's about you learning how to see. Um, yeah, it is definitely learning how to see. Um, it's learning about how to use the hand-eye coordination to um, get your hands to create the shapes that you see. Because, um, I mean, there are no outlines in life. There are edges to things, um, and some of those edges are soft edges that sort of need to dissolve away, and other edges are hard edges, which make it appear like there's a line there. So it's about seeing shapes. All right, so backgrounds. Um, 
I really want to stick with all these beautiful warm tones. So um, I'm going to take some sepia. This is from Golden's QOR collection. I'm just wetting that right now with my cat's tongue brush. It's really nice because it's like a wide brush, but it tapers. All right, so I'm going to take this and plop this in back here. Now my watercolor paper, I am using arches and I was having not a good time stretching it last night because my paper tape decided that it doesn't like the adhesive. I don't know if it just like went bad or something, but it was just like, no, I'm not going to stick to anything. So this morning when I went to look at my paper, it was just like this huge horrible mess and I was really sad. Um, so my paper is going to get like a little bit lumpy and bumpy because I did not have time to restretch paper. This, yeah. So that might affect my painting a little bit. Hopefully not too much. Now I'm going to take some transparent brown oxide and I'm going to use quite a bit of water so that it's a very light value. Um, and I'm just going to bring this in on her cheek with a lot of water and sort of stretch this across Esther's face. Oh, hello. A little string. <laughs> and Kelly, congratulations to your dad. He's able to, to be working on selling his artwork. That's awesome. I'm like the worst salesman ever when it comes to selling art. My friends were like, will you paint this for me? And I'll be like, yeah, sure. Like, how much? I'm like, uh, I don't know. Cookie. I'm a bad salesperson. <laughs> Brown I'm grabbing. It's definitely not the sepia. It looks my hair like a burnt umber to me. Oh. Alright, and now I'm gonna bring this right in here. I'm so sorry. If anybody does not like singing, I apologize. I just can't help it. I'm happy. I'm like one of those little kids. But I'm not happy to just Keeping, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat just decided I don't want to work right now. I'm um, just trying to keep it really soft edges right now. I'm going to mix a little bit of Payne's Gray and darken up Esther's hair. Well, she has majestic hair. I don't know what that's like. I shaved my head. And so now I have no hair. See, this brush is great because I can get like these little bit at the areas. Or I can squish it down and get huge areas.
Okay, so Lauren, would you be able to post a short video on how you stretch your watercolor paper? I actually do have a video posted somewhere on Sketchy Art School um, on how to stretch watercolor paper. It's not the best video out there because, like I said, my um, my paper tape is like. <clears throat> so I will make another one and post it on Sketchy Art School in the watercolor group um, just to help people out. It really does. Like, see how this is like bubbling? You really don't want that because that's yucky. Um, and that happens because as the paper gets wet, it starts to stretch out. The paper gets full and starts to expand. Um, and so when you pre-stretch it, you put it in a bath of water, not warm water, cold water. And you can leave it in there for a few minutes and then you just let it, give it time to expand. And then you would put it down on um, the watercolor board, some sort of harder surface. Um, I just buy a masonite board from the hardware store um, and then I seal it with an acrylic sealant. Um, let that dry, obviously. And then I put the wet paper down on it and then before it dries, I lay down paper tape on the edges um, because the, the wetness of the paper activates the adhesive in the paper tape. And then you're just supposed to let it dry and then the, the tape adheres it to the edge of the board and then it sort of tightens, but it can't go all the way back to its original form because the edges are being held taut by the paper. Um, and then so it prevents all this buckling action that I am dealing with right now. But I'm using Arches paper, so it should it should hold up pretty well to all this abuse. If I were using um, Gator board, works great for stretching. Well, yes, it does. Gator board is is really rather nice. Um, but I mean, if you can't access it, you can always just use like a piece of masonite as long as you seal it first, because otherwise, um, sometimes like it will stain the back of your paper. Like it did to me, and I'm feeling upset because her paper is stained. I'm sorry, I can't sit still. I'm just too wiggly in this rolly chair. Right, let's get this back over here. All right, um, now I want to add a little bit of green into that background. So I'm taking, I don't even know what green this is. I could make my own. But I already have some purchased green. You are Daniel Smith Genuine Serpentine, which is an amazing green, semi-precious rock. One of my friends actually has a sculpture that was carved out of a, a chunk of serpentine. And after I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, I think made out of that. So that's cool. And the cool thing about this green in the background is candy dandy color wheel. So the green is over here on the cool side and it is quite opposite to the warm tones over here. So let me, this is the CMKY one. Um, but if you look at the green, it is opposite of red so the reddish and the brown is going to really make it pop i'm actually going to add a slight bit of a muted blue so i'm going to take some blue mix it in with my brown like this so now i have like a muted blue i'm not really like i'm always trying to keep some sort of aspects of um, all my colors together. So that's why I'm mixing it with the browns that I already have. So. Stone hedge paper is great. Yeah, I have some of that. Um, I have some stone hedge hot cross paper that I purchased to experiment with. Um, I 
I grew up with Arches paper always in the house, so I'm just very, very used to it. Um, it was what was most easily accessible and available to my mom when she was doing her watercolors. So, it's, you know, sometimes you like to stick with what you know. And, because, I mean, I just know how it behaves. Now, his ear is, like, almost glowing. So I want to find something for that. So I'm going to clean off part of my palette. I'm going to start mixing up some skin tones. So, pardon the noise for a moment. I think I'd be smart enough to plug this in ahead of time. I don't have to deal with this. But no. dry enough to keep it behaving for now. I just used a sort of clean brush to get that to go by. Yeah, my paint usually doesn't listen to me. But, you know, that's okay. It's okay, I don't need it to. Alright, so let's mix up some colors. I'm going to take some quinacridone pink. I'm going to put a pile of you over here. Oh, that wasn't phenomenon pink. Here's phenomenon pink. Okay, and then I'm going to take some whatever you are. I think this is phthalo blue, the green shade. It also could be um, Magellan Missions cobalt blue hue, but I didn't properly label them. And I'm going to take some Azo Yellow and put that here. Right, so I need to make some orange first. Orange and red to get that ear to glow. I'm sorry that I'm shaking. A little bit more red. Ooh, that's so pretty. It's amazing how I can make red and pink. Right, so let's make your ear glow. My son and husband must be playing Minecraft together because I can hear them like talking about building things and then I just heard my daughter yell out, it's beautiful! So they're I love when they play together with these games. It's, it's really cute. Okay, um, now Esther's son, um, his skin is slightly yellower than his mom's. So I'm gonna go in with like more of a yellowy orange and just sweep over his skin. I'm going to try to keep the paper a little damp, but not like sopping wet, um, so that I won't get any harsh lines because babies, um, they don't have 
many hard lines or wrinkles or anything like that. So they're a little bit more difficult to paint because their skin is just so fresh and new and their, their features are like you don't have as much to go on when you map out their features and their faces. Everything's like a little bit more squished together. I just had a really good um, question here. And it is, is there, this is from um, Janice Price. Is there a right or wrong side to watercolor paper and how can you tell the difference? One of the easiest ways to tell the difference is um, if you purchase paper in a pad or a block, the side that's facing up is supposed to be the right side. Um, but if you accidentally paint on the wrong side, the texture just might not be the same, but it still works. Um, I always keep old paintings around because if I don't like them, I'll just use the other side. Um, and, or if the paper's like too damaged, then I will just use it um, like this one to make swatches. Um, so yeah, if you accidentally use the wrong side, you're okay. Um, I know some of the like student grade brands, like some sides are like a rougher texture and the other side is a smoother texture. I'm not sure if they do that on purpose. I don't know if it's on I guess so you can get like the feel of buying two papers in one with a hot press and a cold press. And I've got some other questions. Ever dabble with uh, gouache, gouache alongside of your watercolor? Um, I have tried but opaque painting is a little bit more difficult for me just because I'm so used to watercolors and the, just the luminescent quality of it. Your ears stopped blowing, George. Um, so, like, I try, like, when I do, like, more cartoony things, um, I'll do that. But for the most part, I really just like watercolor. I probably will experiment more with it. I also actually really enjoy playing with um, colored pencil. Um, I really like cross hatching and like working some mixed media in with that. And Joan Martin, she's the one to look at for mixed media. Like, whew. Follow her on uh, Instagram and Facebook, and I see some of the mixed media beautiful pieces that she does with her students, and I'm just like, whoa, completely blown away. So I'm just going in now with, um, while the paper is still wet, I'm adding some of the shadow areas onto her son's face. So. I'm just going into here, getting some of those shapes, dropping it in. I love how there's this a beautiful a fold of skin here, like in that corner. It doesn't really like, divot in that much. It's just like a flat plane. And I really hope to sort of capture that feel. And in order to get that, like the paper has to be just the right amount of dry. Like it can't be too wet because otherwise it will like spread out um, and if it's too dry then it will create a hard line and as I was saying with babies you, you want to keep everything soft because they're soft and squishy like my belly after Thanksgiving which is delicious I made pizza <laughs> Apple pie. The gouache is a lot of fun. I want to get more into it. I think um, Mike Creighton, he, he does a bit with uh, gouache in his classes. So if you're interested, so you know we do have that deal. Go, go. But I don't get one. I think it's like over 50 or something like that. Like, I'm getting half off, or is it? I'm getting I don't know. It's 
sketchy help. <laughs> Close the code again. I'm going to grab some of the brown that I previously mixed up. I'm going to use that on these edges here. And a little bit under the nose. Because uh, the brown that I mixed up is a little bit cooler. So cooler um, colors tend to make shapes recede versus uh, warmer colors will bring them to the forefront. So now I need to work a little bit in his eye because eyes are never supposed to be paper white. And for this, I have to get rid of the chair because otherwise I'm just going to end up having an accident. So I'm going to take some of that blue that I added to the brown in my palette and in the corner of his eye where the lashes sort of create like a little visor, that is where I'm going to pop in this shadow. So see how it looks more like an eyeball where you have like the area where the light is actually allowed to touch versus the corner, which is covered in the shadow of the lashes. I'm going to take some of my put off it on pink and I'm going to mix that with some of my brown. So you can see here I'm just taking that and mixing it here and by doing that I'm going to get a lovely lippy color for where the shadows on his little lips. Oh my goodness I didn't even get to look up to his face. I'm just so concerned with painting the baby. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm happy with that eye, I'm going to let this chill out a little bit. Time to look on Esther a little bit. Okay. Now her skin, like I said, um, has way more orange in it. So let's get another pile of Clonfidon pink going. Some more yellow. Voila. Just want it not sopping wet. Just glossy. Because um, as we grow, we lose the baby fat in our faces. So you can tell like our bone structure a lot more. Um, some of us get like wrinkles and crinkles in our skin. Um, apparently if there isn't, because she just doesn't. <laughs> so I'm going to start adding this beautiful warm orange. And in areas where the sun is kissing our skin a little bit more, I'm going to add more of the yellow. And then right under her eye, she's going to add some pink. Some here in the shadow area. Mm-hmm. 
there's like a really um like a beautiful ray of light coming across her cheek so the way that i'm gonna do that is just sort of avoid that area but just go over it with some water and like push some paint out of the way um, and just for like a little hint of contrast i'm gonna put like a little bit of blue and then rinse it off so it sort of stains the paper a little bit i like doing that sometimes all right now i'm gonna take my transact transact translucent brown oxide i'm gonna mix a little bit of magenta with that and use that like around the corners of the nose on the side of the nose, so we'll shot it here and put it into her brows. Okay, there we go. Sketchy just posted the code. So, um, Bobo thanks. Offer expires the 29th. So, if you don't act now, I'm sure there will be other sales as the season goes on, but this one's a pretty good one, especially if you want to paint some gifts for family and friends. You can always like you don't have, um, have to do like individual paintings for each file member. You can always do like one gorgeous painting um, and then use a printing service and have prints mailed to family members for the holidays, which can be nice. Because then you know you don't really have to deal with the going to the post office because you order, you just upload the print and then you can like have it mailed directly to them. And sometimes that's nice because if it's like a big, a big printing company, um, they'll have like different printing offices all over the place. And so like rather than have it go from New Jersey and shipped all the way to California, um, if I were to mail something to my uncle, I could just have it printed in one of their offices in California and then it's like, less um, of a carbon footprint. So that, that's always like a nice option. I usually like, you know, shopping small, but yeah, you know, sometimes it's nice to do something for the planet too. Hmm. My Fitbit just told me that I need to get up and move. which also means I only have 10 minutes left for our session. Which makes me really sad because I did not finish nearly as much as what I wanted to. <laughs> so I'm going to have to like come back sometime during the week and uh, just finish it up a little bit more or post uh, something in the sketchy art school. Pardon me, throwing paintbrushes at myself. Ooh, I would need to go down. I would need to go up. Online, stop being so delicate and precious. Just paint. a layer of blue. Let that dry and then put a layer with a warm brown on top so it will like give me um, 
the purpley brown, like something really deep and inky. I like doing that sometimes. I feel like the shadow in the corner of her eye is like a little bit purple. I think I'm still on my purple people phase. I just end up turning everyone purple. It's like one of my favorite colors to mix. All right, I've got some questions here. This is looking so gorgeous, not painting live. I can't wait to catch up and do this. Oh, cool, Kelly. Um, and then Jenna, Jenny, oh my gosh, I can't read this. <laughs> Jenny Film said, oh my gosh, it looks so good. I'm already loving it. Artist Bro, um, best watercolor brand. Um, I like Daniel Smith, I think is one of my absolute favorites. Um, followed by, what's the other one I like? I like Holden and um, Windsor and Newton. They're some of my absolute favorites as far as watercolors go. And I think Windsor and Newton is probably one of the easiest ones to purchase because, like, even like craft and hobby stores will, will carry that brand. Um, so. I feel like I drop colors in and then I wash it out and then I drop it in and then I wash it out. <laughs> Sorry, I get like sometimes when I concentrate on small details, I get a little quiet tur. Um, I feel like I just sort of flattened her nose out. Sorry. lost a little bit of the structure that I had built up in there. I just need to let it dry a little bit. Get a fresh paper towel. I'm still really mad at my paper for, well not really my paper, I'm mad at my um, tape for not stretching properly. Really upset me. Mm. Oh great, now I have modest mouse stuck in my head. I noticed how Fran, uh, or not Fran, France created a playlist and um, posted it onto the Sketchy Art School. I should make a playlist after I do the Sketchy Live of all the songs I start singing and get stuck in my head. So you guys can get a better idea of the noisiness that occurs between my ears while I'm painting. I am a goofy goober. I'm just not letting my paper dry. 
enough in between my layers and it's starting to get my colors a little bit muddy. So I need to stop doing that. So, oh my gosh, it's 257 already. I feel like I've done nothing. <sighs> like I, I always think that painting takes less time than what it does. I'm like, oh yeah, I can do that in a half an hour. No, no, Lauren, you can't. It might feel like only a half an hour has passed because you're just in the zone, but in actuality, it's been four hours. Because there's just some things you can't rush, like, the time it takes water to evaporate off of a piece of paper. I mean, you can rush it with a hair dryer, but sometimes that will, um, it will ruin some of the special effects that you get. Like if you use salt um, in a wet on wet application, like you really have to let it dry on its own. Otherwise you won't get that beautiful speckling. I'm just throwing paintbrushes at myself. Please ignore. Ooh, excuse me. And I'm also hiccuping. Very quietly this time. Just adding some more of these defined shadows because one of the stinky things about watercolor, or well maybe not so stinky, maybe one of the blessings of watercolor, is that everything always dries later. So, where other medias like uh, acrylic, things dry darker. Um, which can be a little bit of a pain in the butt for color matching. Like if you're painting in multiple sessions. So, and oils, they they tend to dry pretty true. Sometimes like they'll get a haze as they dry and you don't really see the, the true colors of your painting until you get that final varnish on there. So look at these little rosy lips. No, the big babies, too. Pity brush, please. Thank you, self. Thank you for the pity brush. You too. It's so fun. It's like you. I have some brushes that are like this is a one and this is a two, but they look the same. It's different companies. They're just like, eh. I don't know. I like this one. You just love it when you're like in the middle of doing something, you start talking to yourself and you forget what you were doing because you were talking to yourself. And you got yourself off topic.
you know, just standing there having an existential crisis and trying to figure out why am I here? Where are we going in all this? I don't know why when I do small details, um, let me know if anybody else does this too, but like I start whispering. So, Artist Bro says, hi friends, tell your view about Indian arts. Um, I think that the artists of India have the most insane ability to make the most beautiful textiles and patterns. When I was studying art history, I had a professor who, or non-Western course, like it was primarily the, the art of South Asia and India. Oh my gosh, I was just completely blown away, most by the textiles and the teeny tiny details of the pattern work, which was like completely inspired by like the other art motifs in the sculptures and paintings and everything. But I just love the way that the artists were able to transfer all that in, into their textiles and so much of that was lost to just the in like I think it was during like the Regency era with the um the British coming in and colonizing and overtaxing the um the native textiles to try to push people to purchase theirs. Um, it's just so sad because so much of that was lost and the only evidence we have is through some of the, the beautiful paintings that depict some of the textiles that were traditionally created and it just makes me so sad and so I really hope that the younger generation will solve that problem and, and just bring back that art and those just like, oh my gosh, these beautiful designs. I, I really hope that does not get lost. Come on, Gen Z, we're counting on you. W.C. Lee Art says um, that they tend to hold their breath while doing the small details. I do feel like a little guy starting to come to life as I'm getting some of these little details in here, um, defining some more of the hard edges. And as you can see, I am having great difficulty sitting still in a chair. I'm like waddling all over the place sitting on my feet, not sitting on my feet, climbing onto the floor, getting off the floor, climbing back into the chair, standing and painting, throwing brushes at myself. Look, there's a little bit of blue here. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't really tell that I'm even putting blue in there, but I am. Because it's like what I feel is there. What is my family up to? Cindy says um, that your son has ADHD and so you totally get the inability to sit. Yeah, 
I just, I can't get comfortable. And I have to get it like the right angles. And so I have to like contort my body in all different ways. When I could just turn the panel. But that would be too easy. And then I would bump the camera. Or tip over my paint. Or step in my tea. Which is really cold right now. But that's okay. I just have iced tea. I'm really good at losing tea all over the house. And then my son just got into drinking tea with me. And so there are just mugs and mugs and mugs of cold tea that we've lost just all over the place. My husband comes home and says, what did you guys do? Have a mad tea party or something? Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. So a big pile of board games fell off of the shelf and are now all over the floor. No one's hurt. Let's hope that the dog doesn't eat anything. Oops. That bit of blue decided to run away. Um, okay, so it is 10 after, and I am going to have to finish this at um, a later time, unfortunately. Um, I will get, like, it looks like there's a shadow there, but there's really not. It's just, let's see if I hold that down. It's really just the paper. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, I do have to stop right now. Um, but I will record myself finishing up and I will post it on the sketchy art school. So you can see that, um, the finishing process as well as I will post the current progress. And when I am all done, I will put it on my Instagram. Um, I'm sure sketchy will put it on their Instagram and in the mighty networks sketchy art school. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, and putting up with my shenanigans of not being able to sit in the chair. Um, oh, I got one question of what am I going to do about the mother's hair? Um, I really wanted to have like a background down first and then once I finish up her face, I'm going to, um, I want to go in with like a sepia and probably, I don't know, maybe mix it in with a little bit of, um, like a burnt umber so I can get like a really beautiful inky brown and just have that pop her face forward. But then... I just wanted to have the lighter bits in the back um, because as you can see, the edge of her hair is out of focus and so it sort of has that like glowing halo of sun. And I wanna to try to capture that. Um, and then I'm gonna to try to get her eyes to be as deep as her sun's and um, I'm gonna definitely go in with a teeny tiny little brush. This one right in here. Um, Nice little liner brush once you get it wet, it looks even smaller. And get some of those lashes in there, because um, babies always have those beautiful lashes. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to attempt to not overwork it. I tend to do that. <laughs> it's so hard to know when to stop. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Um, as I said, I will post this when it's completed. And if you want to have more time painting with me, unfortunately not live, you can always take my class. Um, which now we have the lovely discount, so you can get somebody else's class too. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, please leave them in the Sketchy Art School. Um, you can um, find me on Instagram, Clutter Monster, um, or on the Sketchy app itself. You can always like leave comments or something, any questions like that. So yeah, it was a really good time.
And yeah, all the comments are so, so wonderful. Thank you for the encouragement. I really appreciate that. I do love the artist community because sometimes we all need to be a member of a community and get a little help and critique and encouragement. So everyone, please have a wonderful, safe weekend. Um, and don't forget to tune in tomorrow because we have some more sketchy live. Um, all right, until then. Peace be with you.